All right, everyone in a low. Welcome to number 200, the 20th anniversary Monster Hunter Countdown. Sandberry off. I lied a little bit to you. I apologize. His first appearance is not in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. It is Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. There's a couple guys added in the three. You, I thought he was one of them. Oops. That's okay. He's good in both games. Uh, amazing. Truly classic looking armor set here. I mean, just chef's kiss. <laughs> oh, I love the G-Rank sets in 3U so much. Oh, they look so good. This one is absolutely zero exception. Matches the weapon incredibly well as well. Big belt. Cool looking jacket. Good looking helmet. Kind of like a fur collar looking thing. The set itself isn't that bad either. What is it, like a metal collar on there? Just great. Just just love love the artistry. Hope we see a little bit that uh, in, in Wilds. So, set gives you attack up. Uh, razor sharp. Wait, no. Attack up, evade extender, and heat cancel. I had to gem in the, the razor sharp, and I think I got it up to attack up large. Um, it's okay. I mean, you know, for a full set, I mean, you know, that's attack and evade extender can be helpful on certain things. Heat cancel doesn't do much. <laughs> it's a little unnecessary, but it's there. Weapons are okay, too. I mean, high raw, lots of sharpness. Can't really complain about that much. Although I, I think in general on, on sword and shield, I would rather have element. And speaking of element, uh, he is weakest to ice. Kind of following like a loose sort of correlation between subspecies being weak to the element of their original monster. Breaking the arms, uh, ice is going to help a lot, and it's not as significant. I mean, we'll talk about it when we're actually fighting him, but breaking the arms helps a little bit, but not quite as much as normal Baryoth. He doesn't seem to slide around for like nearly every attack like Baryoth does. Uh, status is poison, no good. Blast, good. Not shocking. <laughs> Uh, sleep is, you know, okay. It could help you break the arms, but I think you'd rather take Blast. Para is okay, but same thing as before. Reasonably weak to stun. I guess that's helpful. So the fight itself uh, plays out, you know, uh, similar in a lot of ways to Barrett. I mean, that's not shocking. The biggest difference is he creates large tornadoes with his sand breath, and he will fly around in them. You can also make mini tornadoes, which is like a little reminiscent of For You Kushala. For You Kushala's tornadoes are <laughs> way more of a menace, though. This guy's not that bad. It's bad, but it's not that bad. Just a fair, good, clean fight. Not, not as slippy and slidey. I'll show off. I mean, look at him now. Obviously, he's not going to be slipping and sliding until his arms are broken. But uh, very few attacks, he starts to slip and slide until both arms are broken. And even then, he's not always all over the place. So yeah, cool, cool little animation of him flying at you. Baryoth will still do that when he's like landing in an area and he sees you. He'll, he'll like slowly start flying at you out of the air, but you, you see him do this all the time. So there's that mini tornado that got me. It's pretty much the sort of thing you want to have a shield or you want to be ready to avoid, uh, evade whenever a big, big tornado's down. I guess it's kind of scary with like switch axe. Although then again, if you had a Vade Extender, you could probably roll out of the way. Usually, generally speaking. Yeah, but interestingly enough, they let you use his weapons in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. There was a trade-in option. I remember making the same Severetto and being pretty happy with that in that in that game. At least early on, it's good until you start making better elemental sword and shields. So yeah, arm break, of course, causes a trip. And the head, of course, is, you know, the weak spot. Head also has a break. Those are called as indigo tusks. We had a big debate about what color they are. Between, like, purple and blue, is that indigo? <laughs> I feel like I don't know. So now both arms are broken. There's a tail cut as well. You'll start to see that certain moves he'll trip a little bit more. Or he'll start sliding around a little bit more. 
So it's still worth doing. Like any barrier off, it's still worth breaking the arms if you can. Although, uh, maybe, maybe less worthwhile on him if you're not using an ice weapon. Maybe better off, or slime, you may be better off just going for the head. See right there? He tripped a little bit. That's the interesting thing, like, normally you would expect attack opportunities to open up earlier. But with Baryoth, it's just his recovery speed goes down. So it's very much a monster where you have to be ready to proactively react. Is that even a word? Proactively react to whenever he does an attack that's going to cause him uh, a big delay. But watch this here. I could have saved myself with a shield. But damn, that's a lot of damage. Now, this armor is barely upgraded. That's part of the reason why I died, but... Old games don't play, man. It's deceptive. You get two tapped so fast. That's okay. I love him anyways. I would say one of the better 3U fights. I, I You know, we did Restore and Boros earlier. And he just really wasn't that impressive. He didn't feel that different than a normal Durham Boros. But Sand Barrioth, you can get a sense that, like, this guy... This guy's a lot of changes from your normal Barrioth. And it's not just, of course, you know, the the ice to sand. It's just the way he moves and acts and his AI and everything. Just feels different. So it's definitely a good one. Shame he didn't make it in the top 200, which, by the way, he is at least... Well, I mean, I guess he is the top 200. He's literally 200. <laughs> Congratulations! You made it to the very bottom of the list, Sand Barrioth. It's interesting how his eyes glow green. I feel like in certain poses, they don't look like anything, but when he's enraged, they've got like kind of like a greenish sort of glow to them. Sand Barrioth fur. Top quality fur from a Sand Barrioth. Often used in equipment, though, some despise the color. I think it looks good. Rugged Plura Plus. This organ is a secret that allows Sand Barrioth to produce such powerful tornadoes. Sand Barrioth Talon. A rock hard talon found on select Sand Barrioth. There may be nothing it cannot rend. Sand Barrioth Cortex. A bulky cortex from a Sand Barrioth. Though it looks heavy, it's actually quite light. Okay, and a little bonus one Sand Barrioth Lash. A top quality tail from a sand barrioth. Its deep copper color gives it a classy air. And I would say you're a classy monster, sand barrioth. Such a shame we've only seen you in two games. I'm not counting stories. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll come back again someday. Okay, coming up next. A rather contentious monster. You can barely see him. You only see his tail here. Crystal Beard Uragon. Another Deviant in Matsuno Generations Ultimate. I guess he first showed up in Generations. I'll see you all for it then. Thank you again so much for watching. I love you. Goodbye.